the Lord. We're going to open up with the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the Scripture goes like this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snares of the fowls and from the nonsolent pestilence. He that He shall cover thee. With his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. Verse 5. Thus shall not, excuse me, thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Um, I had our prayer list this morning, but I must have left it in the car. But we'll be praying for the saints here. We'll be praying for all our mothers, a special prayer for our pastor and his wife and his family. I also like a special prayer for me and my family. Uh, will everyone please bow your head for prayer or pray with me? 
Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you for putting your holy name in our heart, putting your holy name upon our lips, a name that we can call upon when we need you. Oh, God, we thank you for being the great God that you are. No matter where we at or no matter where we be, you can always reach you, and you will always be there for you. Oh, God, we thank you for that name that all we have to call on is the name of Jesus, and you'll be right there. Oh, God, just bless us right now. God, we ask that you bless us as we enter into this service today. We want this to be a service that we will always remember on this day, June the 13th. Oh, God, just bless us right now. We ask that you save someone. Let your word go out over the airways. Let your word go out in this building. And also put it in our hearts that we take it out in the streets when we leave. Oh, God, just bless us right now. Oh, God, ask a special blessing on everyone that made it their purpose to come in this morning. And on their way right now, oh God, just bless them. We ask that you bless the sick and shed in, God. Uh, bless them that want to be here right now. Let them know that someone is praying for them and someone is caring for them. Oh, God, thank you right now. Go into that hospital room and comfort someone right now. If their family is not, being, not able to be with them, God, you be there. Let them feel your presence right now. Oh, God, we thank you right now. Oh, God, we ask that you bless us. Oh, God, bless this city. Whatever is going on in this city, God, just get in the midst of it right now, God. Go down every street, every airway, every avenue, every uh, terrace. Oh, God, just bless right now. Oh, God, just bless us. Give us a mind that we want to serve you, God. Give us a mind that we want to help someone. Oh, God, we love you right now. Oh, let your word come forth, God. Oh, God, let your blessings be known right now. God, let them know that it's you and not just by the luck of the air. Oh, God, we thank you right now. Just bless us right now. Oh, bless the word as it go forth this morning. Go oh, right now, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We thank you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 amen.
Somebody say he's blessing you too. He's blessing you too. Listen, listen. He's blessing you too. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. 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 Well, go ahead and get that praise out. Get it out. Come on, get it out. This is how we know how to praise him. Come on, get it out.
yes, Lord. Church, say yes. Come on, open up your mouth and say yes. 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 something to be thankful for. Thank you, Lord. Woo Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you love him? I love you, Lord. Love on him. Love on him. Love on him. I love you, Lord. Say it. I love you, Lord. Yeah, let him use you. Let him use you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. This is what worship is all about. I love you, Lord. You're so good. Tell them. know like you know. So Nobody can tell it like you can tell it. You're so good. You're so good. good. Again, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is a prayer worship. Praise. Thank you. to the spirit I am so thankful that you all come in here with expectation I'm thankful that you all come on one accord and that is to hear from God today somebody say hallelujah but I want God's glory somebody say let his glory let his glory fill this house fill this house let me paint the picture for you Y'all know I don't have time to get into it, but the children of Israel was always led by a pillar of cloud by day and a fire by night, right? So God was using that pillar to guide them so until they get to the promised land. He put plagues on me, pulled them off. Then he let Pharaoh let this, say, let my people go. He finally let them go, and God was leading them. And in the heat of the sun, God will allow that cloud to ride over them and shield them from the heat of the sun protect them, and not only was that cloud to protect them, but it was guiding them. Then at night, that cloud would turn into a fire, and it would lead them. Light in the night, not only if it got cool at night, that fire would help warm them. Here we are at a place after Solomon had completed building his temple, that pillar, and here, another thing about that cloud, I, want to, I didn't want to get into it too much, but that cloud, that cloud would descend upon them and stay there whenever they travel and until two or three days, wherever they stay, that cloud would stay there and hover over them. Come on, somebody. I think I'm, touch I'm touching some history. He he's a history preacher. <laughs> I'm an inspirational preacher. She's a prophetic preacher. 
I'm an inspirational preacher, so I know how to stay in my lane. But that cloud, I do know about the cloud. And it will descend, and they will stay there. And then when the Lord will get ready for them to move again, that cloud will raise up and lead them to another place. Come on, somebody. Now, here after Solomon had built the temple that God promised him to build for him, that's when the glory cloud came in. And it came, the thing about this, let me read, I'm jumping ahead, read this. Wait, 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 here, that's good, right there, thank you, Lord. Thank you, right there, I'm right there. That glory cloud would come into the temple. Came, this was the only time, it came into the building, to that dwelling place. When the presence of the Lord came, that glory cloud filled the temple. That's what it did. Somebody say hallelujah. Make no doubt about it. It's not about the bricks and the mortar. Thank God. I thank God. You know what? What makes me proud and what makes me that's inspire me when people can come in God's house and feel his presence. When they can come in and feel the difference because of the glory cloud. Look at that 13th verse. And it came to, y'all see it? What chapter? Y'all, y'all can't read my mind? Fifth chapter of Chronicles. Fifth cro- chapter of Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Y'all have it. Thank you. See, I, I'd have messed up all that on Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Man, that preacher messing up. Fifth chapter of Second Chronicles. Look at that 13th verse. I'm going to tell you how important music is and singers are. And e- it came to even to pass as the trumpeters. Read. And the singers were all, were as what? To make what? Sound to be heard in praising and doing what? Thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets, the cymbals, and the instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, for what? He is good. His mercy endure forever. Then the house was filled with what? A cloud. Remember that cloud? It come down, that same cloud. You see it? What happened? We got all be on one accord. I tell these guys, and they know it. After a busy week, when you come in here, your job is just as important as mine. Whatever you got going on, leave it at the door. In fact, when whatever's on you, when by the time you leave, because of your plan, because of your listening, it's going to get lift up off of you. I was taught that early. Even as a musician, Father, well, he say, son, bring what you got. And then he used to make us get on our knees first and say, listen, this is your time. You can't play 30 seconds before you come. Because what you're doing, I'm, I'm trying to bring the glory cloud. Singers, when we come in, I don't care if we got stuff on our mind. Listen, I come in, I'm gonna get, I gotta get myself together because I gotta usher in the glory. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Ushers, when you come in, listen, when you, even you, when you come in here to get what you need from God, prepare yourself for the glory cloud. For his mercy endure forever. And that then. The house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. So, the 14th verse, so that the priest could could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For what? The glory of the Lord had filled the house. God bless you. You may be seated. For a few minutes, as I hurry to a close, care nothing about how many chandeliers you have. Don't care how beautiful and how magnificent magnificent your building is. You can have the finest carpet, the best pews. You can have granite everywhere, gold everywhere. But if you don't have the glory of the Lord in the house, it doesn't mean nothing. Solomon had built this beautiful temple. And it was beautiful to the sight. It took over several years for him to build it, and it was a beautiful place. It obtained gold and silver, brass and cedar, 
This house for God was without equal. You want to find another description of the temple? Look in the second, second Chronicles, the second chapter. You can read there, and it described the temple, how beautiful and how beautiful it was. After it was built, Solomon gathered the people, not just to dedicate the temple, but to rededicate, for them to rededicate themselves to God. Rededicate ourselves to the service of God. And that's why this message was on me so strong, because the church is open and people are not coming in. And that's why I say it is so important, you all. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. Religion says church Sunday. Relationship says church every day. Question. Let me ask you this. And if you're guilty of it, change it. I've been making a practice. I was making this a practice every day. Before I scroll on Facebook, I read that scripture. Before you scroll on Facebook, read a scripture first. I know it's a habit. It's addictive. And if it wasn't for me being so busy, I can see myself getting caught up in it too. Got quiet, didn't I? Am I touching somebody's nerves? Am I telling the truth? Before you do it, read you a scripture. Take a moment of, of meditation. From now on, don't let that thing overtake you. Somebody say hallelujah. Why? Because I want the glory in me before I do anything else. Before I do, before I even look at the news, before I do something else, I'm going to recognize him first. Is that going to help y'all? Because it helped me. Before I do any of those things, and you can find a moment to do it. I don't, it don't take no 30 minutes to read a scripture. It takes a few minutes to get it in your spirit. Scripture and recite it. Get it in your mind. And next thing you know, it'll be in your spirit during the day. Oh, I'm telling y'all something I know. And then if by chance somebody asks you straight, hey, what's the good word? Y'all going to get that one and use that one? It's good. Everybody ain't going to do it, but at least try. Make it an effort. And when I want you, and then when you do it, if you do the opposite way, say, Lord, forgive me, forgive me. Oh, say the Lord rebuke you. Go back to the Bible. You should. I got two or three apps on there. In fact, some of them apps remind me. <laughs> Y'all need, come on, somebody. Like Facebook pop up on your thing. You can get a Bible to remind you. Is this going to help y'all today? This is how we allow the glory to fill this house. After it was built, Solomon gathered all the people to dedicate the house, but he wanted them also to rededicate themselves. As we coming back into God's house, we need to rededicate not just the building, but we need to rededicate ourselves. That's why we was pulling so hard. That's why everybody's in tune. To try to get us back to rededicating ourselves to God. To where, to where when they start worshiping, you don't have, it don't have to keep priming in you. You don't have to keep going. And some people don't get it to the end of service. But when you rededicate yourself, you can get it at the beginning of the service. And all during the service. Somebody say hallelujah. When you come in here with expectation, it don't take but one little song to get you stirred up. One little scripture, you all happy. Somebody say hallelujah. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord, your God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments at this day. What was the difference between the temple and the tabernacle was why the Israelites changed from one another. The tabernacle was a portable place of worship designed for the people as they were traveling towards the promised land. But the 
tabernacle is a tent, but the temple was a permanent place to worship. After God, after the Israelites, therefore, where the, after the Israelites was led to the promised land, for over 480 years, Israel was escaping from Israel. Egyptians, excuse me. God did not ask them to build a temple for himself, for him, but instead he emphasized the importance of the presence among them. And that the need for their spiritual leaders to be guided by God. It is easy to think of this building as the focus of God's presence and the power that God chooses to use his people to do his work. But he cannot, he wants to, he can use more than he can be, he can use us more than he can use this building. He can use us more than he can use wood or stone. The building is a place where we come to worship. The building is a place and it's necessary that we come to refill our soul, to refill and to feel his presence. This place is important. The ground that you stand on is a holy ground. Not because of the pastor, not because of the name, but because of his glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. It should never, it should, this is a, it, the, the priority, it should always be a, a, a priority where we're coming to develop our soul, to develop us as people of God. Simon, Simon declared that even the highest heavens cannot contain God's presence. It's amazing that though the heavens can contain him, he's willing to live in the hearts of us. He's willing to live in the hearts of the people. He's willing to live in the temple. Not only is this a temple, but your heart. Paul said, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm trying not to holler, but I'm really I'm getting excited. Because not only do you need to realize that the presence of the Lord is here, but you walk with the presence of God. You talk with the presence of God. God is in you. That's why every now and then you got to say, Lord, let your glory fill the house. Just like it did when they were at the day of Pentecost, they were all in one place, on one accord, one accord. And what happened? The Holy Ghost came and filled the house, and it filled all where they were sitting. Somebody say hallelujah. So when God's glory comes come in your house or come into your temple, when stuff happen in your life, it doesn't really rattle you because you got the glory of God. So when sickness come in, I can say, listen, oh, that's all right, but I still got the glory of God. When things are going on in your life, children and things are acting up on the job, it's all right, I still have the glory. If you're not careful, you'll lose it. Some people have lost the desire for his glory. That's why they don't come to church. That's why they find an excuses. But I tell you, it seems like the travel agencies are picking back up. Seem, seem, seem like that. That's right. They're putting their masks on and going on about their business. And going back as you. Come on, somebody. All these things are picking back up, right? But why the church is not full yet? That's why the Lord let me say, listen, just, all right, just spot it. Just put stuff out there. But don't do the whole service because I want the glory back in the house. Somebody say hallelujah. We can't make no excuses now. We can't make no excuses because the temple is open back. The presence of the Lord is in the house. He's everywhere. But then when you come in... Isn't it a beautiful thing when we can come in here and worship God together? We draw strength from one another. Somebody say hallelujah. You may be going through something, Brother Hatchet, and then you start praising God because I made up in my mind I'm coming to get in his glory. I saw you worshiping him. I saw you praising him, Brother Hatchet. I saw you. So glad to see Corey and his wife. His wife, they're going to have a baby, y'all. That fella... He was telling me on the phone, I could see his teeth through the phone. No. He happy, going to have a little bouncing baby boy. Imagine that. Another Corey? Fine young man. 
Guess what he was telling me? He said, Unc, God has been blessing me. God has given me the desires of my heart. Somebody say hallelujah. That's why you got to make sure you have the glory. Somebody say let the glory not only fill this house, but fill this house. back in his presence. Some of us strayed away. But the beautiful thing is you're here to hear my voice to say, oh no, I got to get back under the glory cloud. So I can get in that glory. As long as that cloud was around them, the presence of the Lord was around them. Somebody say hallelujah. I want the presence of God to hover over you. I want the presence of God to follow you. Like David, who, who say, that he say, though he, uh, uh, I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, the shadow of death, I do what? Fear. In fact, no, you read that scripture today, this morning. What was that? He that what? Dwelleth in what? The secret place shall what? That's the cloud. That's the glory cloud. Didn't you read that? Everywhere I go, I want the glory cloud. When you walk into a room, people can feel something different about, because not because of your name. It's because of who you serving. You bring the glory cloud. Your job is better because you're there. I'll say it again. Your job and the people that's around you are better because you are there. Why? Because I bring the glory of God there. So whatever you do, whatever you do, whether it's in business or teaching, whatever you're doing, when you are around, the glory cloud is with you. Somebody say hallelujah. We need to recognize that. We need to, you need to understand that. When your heart is overwhelmed within me, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. That rock is Jesus, that glory cloud. Sometimes you have to remind yourself when things and trouble arises, you got to wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I got his glory. His glory is with me. I have his presence. And if you don't have it, you need to be seeking after that glow, that presence, that Holy Ghost, that spirit of God that will dwell in you. I had to get this out of my mind because uh, the way they say that if you want to be exposed to the Holy Ghost, you always have to roll in the glory cloud. That's what I was expecting to see. No, no. I ain't shouting the steady. I ain't saying that over and over. Give up to God. That's what happens. The glory comes in. The glory of presence of the Lord come in. I had an experience the other day. I went to get a haircut. Young man was in there talking about the stuff that he did and how he was all doing some certain stuff and you know, all kind of stuff. I ain't getting into it. All kind of stuff. And, and, and I was sitting in the chair listening to him, and, and then he made a statement. He said, man, I was in so much trouble, and the, and the police let me go. That gave me an opportunity. Before I walked out the door, I said, man, you owe God a praise, boy. He looked at me. He got quiet. I said, I got you, didn't I? I said, man, God is telling you to change your ways. That's the glory. And he said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, you right. opportunity to let them know that was the glory of God. That's the presence of God teaching you and showing you. Somebody say hallelujah. Lord, let your glory fill this house. Come on, somebody. That's what you're for, Lord. Let your glory. God is everywhere. He's here. There and everywhere at the same time. Out of all the billions of people, he can make you feel so personal. At the same time, 
Somebody else is crying out to God. Somebody say hallelujah. David said this like this. Thou will show me the path of life. And in thy presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand is the pleasures forevermore. In other words, as long as I'm in his presence, I got some joy. Long as I'm in his presence, 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 presence, nothing else matters. Somebody say hallelujah. You can overcome trials and tribulations as long as you stay in his presence. You can overcome sickness as long as you're in his presence. And then you can say like Job, say, though the skin worms eat up my flesh, I'm in his presence because I still trust him. Y'all going to let me holler a minute? As I get ready to close, Lord, I need your glory. In this pandemic, Lord, I need your glory. When others are losing their desire to serve you, Lord, I need the presence of the Holy Ghost. Lord, when my heart is shaking and when I get nervous and upset, busted and disgusted, I need your glory. Somebody say hallelujah. You should not worry about your trials and the tribulations as long as you've got the glory of God on the inside. Listen, you may take my car, you may take my job, you may even lose my job, but long as I got the glory of the presence of the Lord, that's all right. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm so glad that I found him before it was too late. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you experienced his glory? Now, aren't you glad that you know that the presence of the Lord is with you wherever you go? Mm -hmm. Late in the midnight hour when you feel all by yourself, when somebody's already turned their back on you, but that's, that's all right. You say, I still have the glory of God. In fact, he said, I'll never leave you, nor I will forsake you. Mm -hmm. I'll be right there when you're going through your trials and your tribulations. I, I'll be right there when you got food poisoning. I, I'll be right there when you sick in your body. I'll be right there when you got cancer in your body. I'll be right there when they say you got high blood pressure. I'll be right there when you say you got diabetes. I'll be right there when you got an aneurysm. But I said, Lord, I need your glory. Wherever I go, let your glory fill this house. Now, if you can't feel it like you used to, you ought to be standing up right now with your hands hands up uh, and looking towards heaven uh, and say, Lord, uh, I need your glory. Uh, Lord, uh, I need a refreshing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Lord, uh, fill me again. Uh, Lord, uh, fill me again. Uh, here I am. Uh, I got a picture uh, with the, before an empty fountain. Uh, feel me, God. Uh, let it overflow. Uh, I'm too tired uh, of trying to do things on my own. Uh, I need your glory uh, to fill my house. Uh, I need your glory uh, to fill my mind. Uh, yeah. Uh, you ought to stand to your feet uh, and say, Lord, uh, fill this temple. Uh, Lord, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Satan, you got to go. Sickness, you got to go. I got to make room for the glory of God. I got to make room for the joy of my salvation. I got to make room for the peace of my salvation. Lord, oh Lord, I need your glory. I need your glory. Touch somebody and say, you, oh, well, you can't touch him, but to point him and say, I got to have his glory. You got to have his glory. You got to have his presence. Huh? You got to have it. You got to have it. You got to have it. And when you watch the news, it won't rattle you because I got the glory of God. I got the presence of God. 
That way when you get out there, you can walk among the lion's den and, and, and the lion can't even eat you up. Yeah, yeah, you can walk in, you can walk in the lion's den. You can walk in the fire and it won't be burned. <laughs> Y'all missed that. That went right over your head. It won't even smell like smoke. Lord, that's your glory. That's your glory. That's your glory. Redeem this house. Uplifted hands right where you are. Close your eyes. And just let him shower you with his blessing. Just let his presence come. It's not also in the, the, the knocking down and the running things over. What am I doing? Lord, I'm letting you know. I'm surrendering to you. I'm on one accord. I need your glory. I need your presence. Your presence, fill me right now. Holy Ghost, shower down on me right now. Ask the spirit of the living God to fall on me right now. Come on, let him fall. Don't let nothing distract you. Let it fall. Let it fall. I have, you have my undivided attention. Lord, I need your glory. I'm going to be faced with some situations in this life. I'm going to be faced with some stuff that I don't know what to do. But your glory and your presence will be with me. Your presence will be right there. Come on. 